Hello, we are going to talk about population genetics. Um, but before we can, I want to first define what a population is. A population is a group of individuals of the same species living in the same place at the same time. Pretty much it is the breeding group. And population is the smallest unit that can survive or evolve. Population genetics is the study of allele frequencies within a population. It pretty much is how populations change genetically over time. The term frequency is the percent of an allele in the population. Okay, so just to kind of give you a little background, the significance of Mendel's work was not recognized until after Darwin's death. Um, so population genetics kind of came about in the 1920s. Um, it does combine Darwin and Mendel's ideas together. And it's how populations change genetically over time. And what we're going to work on is this Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The frequency of each allele in the gene pool will remain constant unless they are acted upon by other agents. So, Back in 19, early 1900s, 1908 or so, um, there were two guys. There was Hardy, which was a British mathematician, okay, um, and Weinberg, which was a German physician. They kind of got together, and they were just trying to figure out what was happening. So they came up with this Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation. All right, and we're going to practice this in class, so don't stress out about it, okay? But... Lowercase p represents the dominant allele. Lowercase q represents the recessive allele. p squared is the frequency of big W, big W. 2 pq is the frequency of the heterozygote of big W, little w. And q squared is the frequency of little w, little w. Okay? So the two equations that we're going to be working on is p plus q equals 1 and p squared plus 2 pq plus q squared equals 1. Now, it's kind of going to be like a plug and chug. We're going to figure out what one thing is. We're going to use one of the equations to figure out what the other letter is. And then we can modify with the squares and so forth. Okay. So there's a um, fictitious example in your book. It talks about blue-footed boobies either have webbing on their feet, which is recessive, or non-webbing. Okay. Now, what they found, okay, was that... This was the actual genotypes that have occurred, okay? The easiest way that we can do this is when we know what the recessive type is because the webbing is recessive. It only is little w, little w. The dominant or the non-webbing can be either homozygous or heterozygous, okay? So we can figure it out based on figuring out the number of the recessive. All right, and then when you look at the actual Punnett squares, it works perfectly as we did this. So again, we're combining Mendel and Darwin. And we're going to practice this in class. We're going to do tons of different examples so you will totally understand this. But right now, I just want you to write down um, the notes on this so when you come into class, we can all work it, on it together and you already know what P represents and Q represents and so forth. Okay, and our last term is modern synthesis. So this is a theory that focuses on populations as the units of evolution as well as the central role on natural selection. So it incorporates population genetics, paleontology, taxonomy, biogeography. All right, so all of that is combined together. So if you guys have any questions, please see me tomorrow in class and we will practice tons of examples on Hardy-Weinberg and you'll be doing a couple labs on it as well. Okay, thank you.